2007 stroke 2008, after like researching a lot of conspiracy theories for a while, I came across the teachings of Dr. Stephen Greer, who taught about how you can make contact with extraterrestrials through meditation, through what he calls the CE5 protocol. And after practicing this series of meditations for about a month, I had a series of three UFO sightings over my house back in the UK. Um, a few months after this, I came across the teachings of Bashar, channeled by Dawalanka. I believe this. I believe that I created, kind of attracted Bashar into my reality through my visualizations of great extraterrestrials as part of my C5 protocol meditations. I was visualizing the classic face of the great extraterrestrial because that's sort of the only sort of ET I was aware of back then. And so I believe this continued, this manifestation of a few months after the UFO sightings through doing the C5 work, attracting Bashar's work into my reality. I came across him on the internet through a series of synchronicities and started listening to Bashar every day for a year. It was after about a year I spontaneously followed my excitement to Amsterdam in the Netherlands and came back from there after a really good weekend and had a contact experience in the forest with, um, I believe, the Ayel. So at the time, I just experienced it as some sort of awakening experience. I went through a very polarized experience of going into like deep fear and deep pain and deep suffering. And then at, at one point, getting this intuition, I needed to accept that I was infinite consciousness. And as soon as I accepted I was infinite consciousness, I like suddenly polarized from this pain and suffering to like infinite bliss and like felt really connected to everything. And kept walking through the forest, feel, getting higher and higher in this like bliss state through the forest. And at some point something happened, I kind of freaked out, got paranoid. And I believe some point in between this point, I actually had a contact experience due to what I'd been taught by Bashar about how the contact experience can occur, how the frequencies will go very high and how we probably won't remember it, at least at first. And this experience I don't actually remember at all really till this day apart from a few sort of visions and like knowing that aliens were real after this. But what happened was in 2018, just recently, I... I had the same experience again, but this time I began to remember the experience after, after the, after the experience in meditation. So, so, so I, so I, so I knew because it was the same energies and the same very bizarre frequencies and experiences that I experienced. So I suspected that back in 2009 I'd had this contact experience, but in 2018 this like confirmed it to me because it was the same experience, but I actually recalled parts of the experience. And so after this, I became very telepathically sensitive. I became very sensitive to, to my environment and the energies of the environment. I, I could sense what people were thinking, like I'd be driving down the road, like back from a meditation session in the forest, and I'd pick up what the driver on the other side of the road was feeling at the time, like I could tell if they were stressed or happy or frustrated or in a rush, like I could really sense their energy after this experience back in 2009. So I, I played with a little bit of channeling after this around 2010, 2011. I was doing a few sort of um, written channelings for people over the internet, but then kind of just dropped it. And as they say, if, if, if you use it or lose it, and I, I think I should have carried on using it because I, I probably would have been a more advanced channel by now. But I dropped it for many years and then came back to channeling, really, apart from playing with it a tiny bit, I came back to it in around three or four years ago, so around 27, I believe it was the beginning of 2017, but it might be in the beginning of 2016. And so, so I've been channeling professionally for three or four years now. How it happened uh, back in three or four years ago was I... I was out channeling in the hills, I'm channeling my higher self, playing with it, recording on my phone when I first started uploading to YouTube. And I felt, I sensed this energy come through that I recognized as the Yael from another channel, Sean Swanson's channelings. And as soon as I opened up to this energy, it was like the floodgates opened and just all this like energy and information and consciousness poured into me. It was like I opened up like rapidly to the Yael's consciousness and it poured in really rapidly. And so that's, how I started channeling. So, so I guess the point of this is that the, the essence of channeling is being able to alter your vibrational state to a vibrational state 
that is different to our own. And normally, if not always, this will be a higher, a higher vibrational state than ourselves. And so perhaps I could give a quick overview of the nature of reality. So, so like when I say a higher vibrational state, often this all like irritates some people because like this idea that everything is one and everything is equal. And of course that is true because from the ultimate perspective that we'll get into in a bit, the, there is only oneness in creation, there is only one consciousness in creation and that is us, there is just consciousness, just the one consciousness, source, God, creator, spirit. Like this idea of Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness is the idea of accessing and, and being aligned with this frequency of oneness. And so from the ultimate perspective and the ultimate understanding of who we are, when we really drop into our like infinite nature, we come to see that there is only one consciousness. So, so, so like a tree is not better than a, a cat and a cat is not less than a human and the human is no better than a potato because it's all just one consciousness. We're just one energy. We're just like one thing, an un, un, unidentifiable thing ultimately, but we're just the, the same substance, the same vibration, the same energy, just all, all experiencing different things. So there is only one thing in creation and that's us and that's you and we are one. And so from that perspective, nothing is better than anything else. However, and I guess this is a good segue into giving an overview of the layers of consciousness as I understand it. So, so in creation we notice that life tends to be structured in like um, prisms of, of, of light of seven, like, like the idea of a rainbow, when you see a rainbow in the sky it's white light but it's, but the way it's fractalizes, I don't understand the full process, but the way it reflects the light going through the water particles in the rainbow is that it, it breaks it down into seven, seven, seven colours. And the idea is that this is the same through creation. There's like the seven chakras in the human body. We have the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, and the violet white, or the white or the violet, or however you perceive the crown. So, so I believe that's seven. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and white, violet, white. So that's the seven colors. And it's the same in creation. It seems, there seems to be like the same sort of splitting of light because ultimately, I guess, light is the closest representation we can see of the pure consciousness that we are. And so light in its pure state is white, like, like the, the highest chakra. But as it fractalizes down, it fractalizes through, through, through six other dimensions of consciousness. And so the first dimension of consciousness, or density as I'll refer to it from now on, not so as not to get confused with other teachings, is and the term density I believe originally comes from Ra and the Law of One series. And so, so what I'm teaching here is, is, is partly from the Law of One understanding. The idea that there is, there is only one consciousness in creation, and that is like fractal, fractally represented through the seven spectra of light and the seven chakras of the human body and the seven levels of existence and consciousness. So the seven levels of existence are um, one, the first level, which we could relate to the root chakra, which is rock, animal, and no, no, sorry, so rock, rock and mineral life, not animal life, rock and mineral life, and like the elements like earth, air, fire, and water. This is the like the first way life began to experience itself, linearly speaking, and of course time isn't linear because everything exists here and now, but it seems that like there has been a linear experience within creation, at least from our perspective. So linearly speaking, the, the first real experience of existence after like life began to like, like crystallize on pur pure consciousness, or perhaps the way life crystallized in its most dense form, its most its low its lowest experience, I guess we could call it, is mineral and rock life and the elements. And so and so we can look at the evolution of like the mineral kingdom 
through the way it evolves from ba very basic rocks into crystalline structures. And crystalline structures are rocks beginning to move. They're bit, it's like the evolution of consciousness. Like cri crystal is like the, the enlightenment of first density. And so, so, so once you've reached the crystal state and you've dwelled as a crystal for millions of years, perhaps, like your consciousness is beginning to like learn everything it can about being a crystal, and so it begins to want to grow. And the natural impetus of creation to grow and explore and expand somehow creates, I guess, through energetic interactions with the galaxy and the cosmos as as the planet Earth would like evolve like from a, a rock only planet perhaps if it was many eons ago. Like over time with the like galactic frequencies and the higher energies coming in it would like stimulate the rock to begin to want to evolve and it evolves into crystal. And from here it at very at some point it goes through like a quantum leap through a paradigm shift and it begins to experience itself as the veg vegetative kingdom, as vegetable and animal life. So, so second density includes the vegetable kingdom, plant life, as well as the animal kingdom. So they're all second density. They're all just the same consciousness because um, plants and animals don't know themselves as separate from source. They're not like self-aware they're aware they're conscious because all things in creation are conscious so it's like pure but it's more just like pure consciousness existing it's not consciousness aware that it's conscious like we are and perhaps that's the term that we call we call sentience like self-awareness like like we are aware that we are aware and so 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 animals are still second density they're still not really aware they're they're aware they're just aware they're just awareness experience in creation and they're very much connected to source so their lives are very blissful because they do not experience connect disconnection from source and that's why they can just lie around doing nothing here looking at my cat so and just be happy because they're connected to source so they've constantly got that flow of bliss running through them but as we evolve from here, we, we like learn everything we can about moving as an autonomous ent entity directly connected to source within the natural flow of creation. But from here, as we move to three, third density, as like our planet moves through the, the galaxy and we enter new galactic fields of consciousness, those, those frequencies, and this is what we're experiencing now as a human civilization moving from third to fourth, but they also played out the same game with like stimulating the, the animals' minds to begin to seek something deeper and to begin to look and to begin to interact in a different way and to begin to interact with higher consciousness beings and receive names that they could then sort of understand that were them and would begin to introduce them to self-awareness and sentient consciousness. So... So this occurred and we shifted into third density. We, we became self-aware, we became sentient, we became like aware that we were actually entities like in an environment and we seemed to be able to affect our environment through our thoughts, like what we thought we would do, we would do and then, and then we would reap the rewards of that. So that was an evolution of consciousness to third density. And of course we all know a lot about third density because it's us, we've been living in third density for thousands of years. So if you want to understand it, just look at the history of humanity or one version of third density. I don't think it has to be like so horrific in third density, but it is a catalyst period. The idea of third density is that it provides a strong catalyst for us to decide how we want to play out the rest of our soul's journey through the higher dimensions, through the higher di densities. So the, the role of third density is that duality exists within third density, like, like duality and free will, the free will to be good or the free will to be bad the free will to align with our heart's calling or the free will to act to out, act out of fear and like um, do something bad to get money because we fear we can't manifest on our reality through love. And so this is the journey of third density and what humans have ex been experiencing for, I don't know, perhaps 12,000, 9,000 years. Seems they were in a higher density consciousness back in Atlantis. So, so yeah, where was I? So... Yes, so, so the idea of third density is to give us contrast and polarity to decide what 
to decide basically whether to follow the, follow the path of the dark and the light. And this is the choice. This is what humanity is going through at the minute with the high contrast on Earth. It's really we're going through the choice whether to align with our highest excitement, our passion, our calling, our service to humanity through what we love to do, which is always service when we're aligned with our hearts and our higher chakras, because creation just wants to serve itself because it knows it is all itself. And so, so, so we're going through this splitting now. This is the split. We are going through the split from third density to fourth density. We're right in the middle of it. And we're, be given, we're being given the choice whether to align with compassion, service to others, love, unconditional love, like creativity, higher dimensional understanding, like downloads from a higher self in alignment with like a heart's understanding of how to be a compassionate, loving, cre creative entity within this reality, or whether we choose to go down the path of fear and like go, go to some corporation who's like making loads of money out of like hedge funds that like don't really serve the client as much as they could like it's a quite selfishly oriented like like you might be going down a dangerous route if you're following that sort of path so yeah so this is the density it's the choice of unconditional love the lesson the lesson of our density is the lesson of unconditional love if we want to shift to fourth density positive and make this split which we're right in the middle of now so this is really critical at the present time we have to make the choice to shift to unconditional love and service to others in the understanding that when we're in the path of unconditional love and service to others we feel absolutely amazing because the love and the service frequencies are flowing through us so it's not like taking anything away from us and so fourth density is the density that the Yael and I believe the Sasani, Shikani, Bashar civilization dwell in. Um, they're currently shifting to fifth density, so they're probably becoming a lot more fifth density now. But the Yael, as I understand it, are still fairly fourth density, although I, I believe in my understanding. So, so fourth density is what some people call the fifth dimension. I don't call it the fifth dimension because the fifth dimension relates to fifth density as I'm about to explain. And it's a bit confusing because people talk about ascending to the fifth dimension, this evolution of consciousness. And we're very much going through a huge shift of consciousness like I sense here in the Inca Valley in Peru. The fourth density frequencies really amplifying very fast. But Yes, yeah, so we're definitely going through this shift of consciousness, and I'm not denying we're going through this shift into the fifth dimension, but, but, but it's not good terminology in my understanding, because to me, the fifth dimension, we have four dimensions on Earth. We have, um, is it left, right, up and down? It's three dimensions, yeah. <laughs> so the three, the three dimensions of, yeah, we have like X, Y, and Z, the three dimensions of... Um, space and we have the fourth dimension of our third density reality which is time so we currently live in a fourth a fourth dimension a four dimensional reality three dimensions three dimensions of space and one dimension of time and so the fifth dimension is the dimension of pure consciousness pure spirit pure awareness kind of what we are like when when, when we go into meditation and we kind of like just observing what's going on. If we go deep into it, we will see that we are actually nothing, no thing that our physical mind can pinpoint and identify because we are just pure consciousness. We are beyond everything. We, we are the perceiver and the creator of everything. We, we are our entire reality. Therefore, everything exists within us. Therefore, while we must also be everything, we must also be beyond everything, every manifest thing as we know it, so that we can perceive it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to perceive it if we were it. So, so this pure consciousness, this pure awareness that we ultimately are, spirit, source, our higher self perhaps, this, this pure consciousness that we are is the fifth density consciousness. It's like what I would call fifth density consciousness. Perhaps that's not exactly right because fifth density is still an experience within the pure consciousness. But as a, as a teaching, as an understanding, just for the point in the moment, like fifth density is the um, is, is spirit, is spirit, is con consciousness, like pure awareness. And so we're not shifting into that reality as humans at the minute. We're shifting. That's fifth density, as I understand it. We're shifting into fourth density, which is embodying spirit, embodying fifth dimensional consciousness, embodying fifth density awareness in 
physical reality. So, so operating in a new way and to use the Bashar framework, physical mind perceives, physical brain receives, higher mind conceives. So this is, I think, really how the human mind has always been designed to operate, but but we've kind of got lost in the, the use of the physical mind, but definitely now as we're shifting into fourth density, this is how we need to be using our physical mind. This is how we need to be using our physical consciousness. We need to be understanding this framework that Bashar has delivered us, the idea that physical mind perceives, physical brain receives, higher mind conceives. So I hope I said that right. So, so the physical mind perceives. The idea of the physical mind is to perceive what's occurring. It's like we, we've got this idea as humans that we need to work everything out with our physical minds. We need to work out how the future is going to happen. We need to like um, make contingency for all possible things that could go wrong. We need to control every aspect. But this has been, never been the nature of the physical mind as I understand it. And it's certainly not the nature of how we are supposed to use our physical mind this part of us that we are perhaps identified with at present or heavily identified as we're using it well, we're not supposed to use our physical mind for for working everything out it's not working out how we're going to create our future how the future is going to happen it's not the job of the physical mind the physical mind's job is to perceive what is occurring this is the main role of the physical mind as I understand it and of course it has other uses the physical mind but for this framework and for this understanding of how we're supposed to operate in a new reality, in a fourth density reality, it, the underlying fundamental prin principle or function or use of the physical mind is to perceive what's occurring. And I guess this is what a lot of teachers like Muji and Eckhart Tolle are pointing to when they say don't listen to the mind, don't listen to the mind. Well, why do they keep telling us not listen to the mind to become enlightened? It's because we've become so identified with the mind that we believe everything it's telling us. And it's telling us that it knows how to master our reality, but it doesn't. It's a lower vibrational aspect of ourselves. It's a, it's a consciousness very much related to the lower chakras. The, and this is not like denoting it or putting it down. Like, like, it's in, like I said before, it's one that's the law of one. The mind is equally a valid and beautiful part of creation. It's just a tool that was used when we were at a lower state of consciousness. And now we're moving to a higher state of consciousness. We need to understand how to use this, raw, this tool, the tool of our mind, efficiently and how it was designed to be used in a higher organism. And so, so the idea is that these teachings of, you know, don't listen to your mind, just watch the space between the thoughts. The reason they're teaching us is, one, because we're not our mind, our true nature is that space between thoughts. But also, like, like they've obviously come to this understanding that they are phys listening, to the, my, listening to the thoughts of the physical mind doesn't understand us. They've had, like, these big breakthroughs into, like, Zen Buddha consciousness. And they don't really know what to do at first, a lot of these teachers, but they know that they sense there's a higher source around, so they just pray a lot. And after a while, they realize that their life runs a lot more smoothly when they're not panicking about listening to the chatter of the physical mind and trying to work out everything with their physical mind. So, so this is the idea. We're breaking through into the heart space, into the heart chakra and the connection to the higher centers and the pure awareness of the pure self. This is the consciousness of fourth density. It's being centered in the present moment, centered in our energy body, centered in the consciousness of all our chakras, aligned and balanced in harmony. So we haven't got like loads of trauma and subconscious fears from our childhood still like tricking us into believing that they can actually serve us into the, in this new reality. It's, it's the realization that the physical mind is here to perceive. It's the, it's the job of the physical mind. It was just designed to be present. Its main aim, its main purpose is to be present in a third density stroke fourth density reality so that it can experience. It's, it's here to experience. We're here to experience this as a higher self. We like condensified and, and, and layered ourselves in layers of consciousness down into this physical reality so we could have the physical reality experience and the job of the physical mind is to perceive what's occurring in physical reality so we can have a physical reality experience and so level two of Bashar's framework 
Level one, physical mind, perce physical mind perceives. Level, level two, physical brain receives. If you give me one moment to get my prop. At my temple, can't quite see it. So, so the reason crystal skulls have been used for many thousands of years is because they are stores of information. So we all know that crystal can store information. Like modern science and technology uses crystal to store information. Like um, the New Age community and spiritual people have used crystals for a long time. And the idea is that crystals store information. Like you can charge them with like frequencies in meditation so they hold the frequency of the meditation. So you can leave them in your space after you've been meditating and they continue to give off this aura. Because crystal is a receiver of information. And the idea is that the, the physical brain, there is no better, whoops, there is no better design for an antenna for a receiver of information than the, than the physical skull, the, the cranium, the physical skull. And this is why, like for many thousands of years, certainly since the times of Atlantis 12,000 years ago, the crystal skull has been used to store information. And that's why I have one, because it's been on my journey with me for like 10 years or a little less, and it's storing everything I've ever done. So it's like a kind of data bank, I guess, to remind me that I'm infinite. And so, yeah, so physical brain receives. It's designed as an antenna. This is an antenna shape, a perfect shape for receiving information from the cosmos. And the idea is that the physical brain is a receiver of information from our higher self. And our higher self is our infinite self. So our higher self is very like reflected very much reflected and symbolized within the un the manifest universe and also the reality around us our our our, our, our local environment and very much in our energy body like uh, like our higher self is very much present in our energy body because we are our higher self ultimately and like i say we've layered ourselves down through layers of consciousness through like universal consciousness galactic consciousness the consciousness of our soul our over soul our higher self the brute the blueprint level the the level where we go to create our reality in higher dimensions like like this that's occurring now today um i i would have pre-agreed to do this especially if it's very aligned like this I would have pre-agreed to do this uh, I would have conceived this uh, interacting likely with a lot of you guys that are watching it now in a higher dimension like discussing like how can this best serve you guys how can this best serve us how can we like crystallize this down in physical reality so that the channel gets the best experience and the, and the receivers of the information get the best experience possible in the moment and so we kind of like crystallize our ultimate nature down through layers of consciousness into our energy body and and receive information through this like our energy body is our antenna like our skull is an antenna but our energy body is also like a higher version of our skull and so and I guess our skull is receiving from our energy body it comes into our energy body and into our skull and then the physical mind begins to create symbols and interpretations that it can use to understand the information. So, so this is the idea that the physical brain is a receiver of information and of course very important for the understanding of being a channel. And so the third part of Bashar's framework, number one, physical mind perceives, number two, physical brain receives, number three, higher mind conceives. So our higher mind is always conceiving our reality. It's like I guess it's working with all our experiences on our physical our physical plane, all of the stuff that's going on in us emotionally and energetically, all the things we desire to experience as a physical human being, um, combined with our higher selves, understanding of what would serve us the greatest in the moment, to give us the lessons we need to move towards these things that we need to experience. And so our higher self is kind of always conceiving where we're gonna be a little bit a little bit down the line. And so, so it's really not our job to think about how the future is going to happen because we're not creating it. Our, our higher self is 
creating our reality for us and it's just kind of a, a state of just going along being grateful for what our higher self is giving us all the time in the moment understanding the greater and more expansive and more interesting things are coming in the future but while staying present in the present moment as the perceiver as the physical mind so we we as the physical mind stay say here present perceiving our physical reality ha having enabling the um, experiencing of the physical reality experience just being in the moment, following our highest excitement, going with the flow in the moment. We don't really need to use the mind for that much at all. You know, you know, doing our tax return and things like this, we, we probably can't do a tax return purely intu intuitively. And like our physical mind is very good for doing tasks like that when it is needed. But the point is it's a tool. The physical mind is a tool to be used when we need to fill out our tax assessment form. It's not supposed to like take control of us and go running along all day long on all these potential fear patterns about the future and all these potential regrets about the past and all how we need to create safety blocks here and there and how we need to do this and 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 then our reality will work out perfect. It's not it's not it's not the job of the physical mind. The physical mind is here to stay centered in the present moment. It's to stay centered in joy, you know I mean it's it's I'm not judging you if you're like not enjoy when you're in the present moment because it can tend to bring like, all our stuff to the surface and I have those experiences too but the natural state of the present moment is joy. It's here just to be like centered in this presence, centered in this present moment, like following our intuition, following the downloads, yeah. using the physical brain as a tool it's always been designed to be used for as a receiver of information as a receiver of downloads so the idea is that we stay centered in the present moment following our excitement following our intuition following our creative impulses that come from the heart that come from a higher consciousness like and we just act upon them and we without expectation we're not like trying to think with our physical minds letting the physical mind come back in and how things are going to work out because the physical mind is creating a lower vibrational frequency that's interfering with our reality so when we're following our highest excitement and going with the flow we're moving in the natural flow the natural river and the natural stream of our higher self's consciousness how our higher self feels our reality will be experienced best for ourselves and for all other beings on the planet because our higher self views us all as one.